for. This is the past. We need to talk about the future. There are many countries now who want to use guilt to try and exploit the UK. They ask for reparations. I saw it as a trade minister. It's not culture wars. I was at the WTO. I won't name the, the minister from another country. And he was telling me that we needed to give up some of the things that we were doing because of colonialism and because they needed time to develop. These arguments are a scam. Don't fall for it. We need to make sure that we put this country first. We work well with our neighbours. We work well with other countries. But we have to look after ourselves too. Well, I mean, those advocating for reparations would say, shouldn't we just make up for some of the damage we did through, through the slavery? Um, and as a black woman saying that, they may find that hard to understand from you. Well, uh, there are many things that the British Empire got wrong, but there are many amazing things that the British Empire also did. And we need to be honest about that and stop pretending that it was all bad. The British Empire ended slavery, the Atlantic slave trade. We need to talk about that more. And I want this country to be great for my children as well. We need to control it. We need to make sure that we are thinking about the next generation, not just who's going to white bottoms for us today. That's not good enough. Okay. Kemi Badanok seems not to be leaving the neck of Nigeria and other African countries anytime soon. She's an African. She's a Nigerian. She has always been throwing them under the bus whenever she has the opportunity to speak. I sincerely do not know whatever gross she is having for Africa and her nation land Nigeria. Recently, the chairman of the Nigerian diaspora gave an interview where she said that Kemi Badanok has refused to identify with Nigeria. And here she is again, why Nigeria is battling with the effect of colonialism and there are constant talks of reparation from UK to all her colonies. Kemi Badanok is telling everyone every nation that was colonized by Britain to go to her. Move on. Go fix your problem. Britain is not going to pay any reparation to anyone. For the record, you need to understand that her voice is very loud because she is the leader of the Conservative Party in UK. That is the opposition party in UK. The talk of reparation has been going on for a very long time and the constant questions on the lips of everyone is, should Britain really pay reparation? Should British colonies ask for reparation? Should British colonies ask for reparation? Is it within their rights to ask for reparation? Well, you need to understand that during the colonial era, African nations were reshaped to meet the interests of the colonial powers, notably Great Britain. This reshaping involved not only the extraction of resources, but the restructuring of societies, which created long-lasting consequences. The British occupation of Nigeria, for example, led to the establishment of an export-driven economy centered around raw materials like palm oil, cocoa and minerals, commodities that fed British industries at the expense of local development. Meanwhile, local industries and traditional trades suffered neglect or were dismantled, leaving many communities without viable means of self-sustenance. This extractive economics practice severely impacted the cultural and social fabric of the colonized nations. Colonial administrators arbitrarily drew borders that disregarded ethnic and linguistic groups, forcing previously autonomous societies into artificial entities. This laid the groundwork for the ethnic tensions that persist today in many African nations. Such issues are particularly pronounced in Nigeria where a multitude of ethnicities and religions were unified under British rule, creating a legacy of political and social tensions that fuel instability. Of course, there are arguments that colonialism robbed people of their cultural identities. Education system under the British rule were often aimed at indoctrinating colonial subjects, promoting Western ideas, and suppressing indigenous knowledge and languages. Colonized societies were made to feel inferior to their British counterparts, and the effect of this cultural erasure can still be seen in the lingering identity struggles and dependence on Western framework. Of course, there have been discussion and bragging rights by the British. They claim that they developed infrastructures in these colonies. It is crucial to recognize that much of these infrastructures, such as railway and port, was designed exclusively for the export of raw materials back to Britain. It served British economic interests rather than laying a foundation for local economic development. 
the profit generated by this system never flow back into local communities but instead for the economic growth of britain why the colonized nations remain impoverished and underdeveloped britain was not the only european country that colonized africa germany also colonized africa in 2021 they pay reparation to namibia in acknowledgement of the atrocities committed against the herero and the nama people during the early 20th century when the german colonial forces were responsible for the mass killing of these communities of course we also have the case of france agreeing to pay restitution to haiti after the haitian revolution it has been argued that since germany and france took steps towards reparations for their colonial injustices Britain should also consider its responsibility towards the former colonies it exploited. These reparations are not merely financial, rather they symbolize accountability, recognition of the historical harm inflicted and a commitment to helping former colonies overcome the economic disadvantage that stem from colonial exploitation. Now what Kemi Badanok is arguing is that in as much as there were a lot of injustice that the former colonies endured, they also enjoy a lot of advancement and development from Britain. For example, in Nigeria, the colonial powers introduced infrastructure, administrative system, legal frameworks, and educational structures that laid the groundwork for future state building. The introduction of Western education led to the establishment of university and an educated elite which would rather drive independence movement and contribute to Nigerians post-colonial governance. Again, the colonial legacy also brought about a common language, English, which allowed Nigeria to engage globally, attract investment and become a significant player in the international arena. Today, despite her challenges, Nigeria is one of the largest economies in Africa with thriving industries in technology, entertainment and natural resources. Much of this success is underpinned by system and infrastructure established during the colonial period. From a practical perspective, issuing reparations could set an unimaginable precedent. Colonialism affected nations worldwide, each with unique histories and contributions to global development. If Britain were to compensate Nigeria and other former colonies, this might inspire similar demands from countless nations across Asia, the Americas and beyond, creating economic challenges and straining diplomatic relationships. We are in a globalized village and this is what most of these colonies should understand. Pain of reparations may perpetuate dependency which could hinder the economy and progress of former colonies. Rather than focusing on financial reparations, the emphasis should be on fostering partnerships that empower former colonies to build robust, independent economies and striving societies. These include trade agreement, foreign aid, and knowledge exchange that allow these nations to benefit from modern technology, industry and global market. Britain and former colonies should look forward, not back, prioritizing mutual respect and growth over financial compensation. Of course, we understand that the effect of colonialism is undeniable, but the former colonies can achieve more by focusing on the present and building towards self-sufficient future rather than seeking reparations from former colonial powers. Persistently seeking reparations can unintentionally reinforce dependency on former colonial powers, hindering former colonies from fully claiming their sovereignty. Nigeria and other countries in Africa have the resources, human talent and potential to build robust, independent economies. Shifting the focus from past grievance to current potential could empower this nation to grow and define their own path without external reliance. All the effort they spent on seeking reparation should be redirected towards homegrown solutions to modern challenges. Nigeria and other African countries should focus on critical areas like their education, healthcare, infrastructure and technology that can directly improve the citizens' quality of life. Focusing on reparation can divert attention from pressing internal reforms. The challenges facing many post-colonial nations, corruption, governance issues, economic inequality are largely internal and require local solutions. Nigeria and other African nations who focus on dealing with this problem that has hindered their development rather than focusing on reparation. They should take example of other countries that have overcome the burden of colonialism without seeking reparation. Indian, for example, 
emerge from British rule and focus on economic growth, building a strong democratic framework and investing in education and technology. Today, Indians stand as one of the world's largest economy. In the past 15 years, India has pulled over 400 million persons out of poverty, whereas Nigeria has thrown in over 135 million persons into poverty. These are two nations that suffer the brunt of colonialism under Great Britain. Singapore is another example of a former colony that, despite its lack of natural resources, grew into a global financial hub through strategic planning and visionary leadership. These examples illustrate that former colonies can strive by prioritizing internal development, self-determination and strategic planning over demands for reparations. Moving on from the colonial past, we allow former colonies to create new narrative for themselves. It seems like these colonized nations are still attached to their former colonial powers. Constant talk about this reparation has made it seem as if Nigeria and other colonized nations are still suffering new colonialism. Of course, look at France for instance. France still has a say in most of the francophone countries that she colonized. To date, Nigeria is still being seen as a country that is still being ruled by Great Britain. While reparations may symbolically address historical injustice, they are not the only or even the most effective way for former colonies to build prosperity and stability. By focusing on economic growth, local reforms, international partnership, and the creation of new legacies, former colonies like Nigeria can empower themselves to rise above their past, break circles of dependency, and create futures defined by self-determination, resilience, and success. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.